Uh, but first here, as we get going, uh, will be my commentary. Uh, a book came out about a week ago. In fact, it was last Monday, I believe. It's called Brainwashed, uh, written by former NFL player Merrill Hodge. Um, and his co-author is uh, a researcher, Peter Cummings, MD. Uh, and it basically attacked Boston University, Concu- Concussion Legacy Foundation, and specifically Dr. Ann McKee, who is one of the one of the leading neuropathologists, especially when it comes to studying CTE. Um, they had, and they, being the authors, had a bit of an axe to grind. Now you know who Merrill Hodge is. He played football, had to retire because of concussions ironically um now peter cummings the doctor uh also an author um you may know him from his best-selling book the neuropathology of zombies or maybe you didn't hear about that one um but in this book which i have read uh it's it's a hit job on specifically that place and in in just honesty here um, Concussion Legacy Foundation in Boston U is where I donated my brain uh, around the weekend of Super Bowl 51 about a year and a half ago. Um, and I did it for a lot of basic reasons. And actually, some of the reasons that I donated my brain are some of the things that come up in this book. Um, and that is the history of sort of lying that any of these connections ever existed. Um, I agree with that. Um and the whole delay, deny, and hope they die approach um, that the NFL has taken when it comes to a lot of their former players. Don't get even think about getting me started on some other stuff, which I'll mention here in a little bit. But I just want to mention specifically this book, in case you do buy it and pay the $9.99, um, it is really literally a hit job on Boston U, on Concussion Legacy Foundation, and on Dr. Ann McKee. Um, charging them as basically being the thugs of the CTA world, CTE world, that they basically rule it. And anybody else that doesn't agree with them um, doesn't have a voice. I don't agree. Uh, I've spent time with these people. I've also looked at their research, and I come away with a completely different opinion. Because, you know, let's be honest, we got to look at this simply. If it's been proven, and it has been proven, that repetitive blows to the head, to the brain, is not good for you. Doesn't take a lot to to, to win that argument, does it? I mean, do we agree on that? Well, if it's not good for an adult, how in the world could it possibly be good for a kid? So part of what, and it's got nothing to do with who they're coached by and how they're coached. And, and that's another subject, because that is just grossly inadequate in specifically how they are coached. But kids, 5, 6 to 14, really don't need to be taking all these hits to the brain. For one other overbearing reason that we really don't absolutely know about this. So why expose children to this type of a problem. I've long been a proponent, especially since my association with Chris Nowinski and Concussion Legacy Foundation and studying the subject as I have, I don't think anybody should play contact full padded football until about eighth or ninth grade. So about 14 years old. Is that unreasonable? It's it's out there because people go crazy about it. But... I don't think it is something that we have to really argue about. We have to figure this thing out. And we've got to protect the kids. And we've got to protect the players. You know what? I donated my brain for a very simple reason. I didn't get the choice of making an informed decision. I didn't know how bad it was. These kids, today's kids, today's players have to know, and they're doing a great job with the uh, concussion protocol. They're, do, they're trying to do all they can to take some, certain kinds of hits out of the game and try to protect players from this type of a fate down the road. 
It is not 100%. It's not even 50%. Let's just say it's 1% of people that play and get repetitive brain injuries end up with some form of neurodegenerative disease. 1%. Well, it was one-tenth of 1% that led to the regulation of things like, oh, I don't know, cigarettes, et cetera, and getting people, getting the government involved in that. So let's quiet down a lot of this stuff. If you want to read this book, Brainwashed, go ahead and read it. I think for me personally, I believe it's purely fictional. And it's purely an opinion piece, which is fine. And it's purely a hit job, which is also fine because that's your right. And this goes back into the freedom of speech. God bless you. You want to do it? Great. But that's all I got to say.